So, Michael, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of podcasts out there, buddy. You know that? There are. And, uh, and even a lot of podcasts about photography, man. You know, you open up, uh, you open up Spotify, you open up Apple Podcasts, you go in there and you see some, some pretty well-funded corporate photography podcasts. Yeah, and you yeah. know what? They, they might have the resources, they might have the money, they might have uh, the, the wherewithal, they might have the talent and all of these things. You know, the ta yeah, the talent, um, very yeah. important. But you know what they don't have, Michael? What do they not have? Friggin' awesome intros. And today is no exception. Yeah. We've we've got an amazing intro for you guys. My man Michael Costa is gonna kick it off. All right, Sydney, cut that music. Here we go with the intro. Do 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 do. If you want to learn about photography, who are you going to call? Photo Bros. Da, 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 da. Oh, man. That hey. was sick. That was sick. That was sick. I was so man, worried. Man, I was so worried. hours, hours <laughs> of practice, sweaty, just like drenched. Just, oh, my God. It, it was it, the, so much rehearsal, but um, I think it paid off. How did you feel about it? I feel good about it, man. You know, the people mm. only, they only see the, uh, they only see the good times, right? They don't see the struggle. They don't see the <sighs> struggle behind the scenes, the hours of work, the vocal exercises, you know, the vocal coach, uh, yes. you know, all that type of, uh, professional stuff that we do. Yeah. But. Just so you guys know, we brought in Ariana Grande, uh, to help us out. Yeah. with some of the the vocal techniques the very technical vocal techniques we used absolutely in that intro. absolutely yeah. man and the the weekend yeah. lately has been uh consultant as well for for the dance moves so yeah 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 and uh you know the you know the brothers you know how we bring it and we've got uh not just a great intro for you guys today although i mean that was a pretty freaking good intro but that was a great not, intro that's not the only thing that we've got on these other uh, photography podcasts we have a great topic from your brother jared poirier never here to disappoint always here to impress and uh michael costa is here to impress the people as well with uh you know what a a touching news story i'm gonna say a touching news story when michael costa mm -hmm. sent me over the news story uh, let's pretend that we prep for this podcast more than we do. When he, <laughs> when he sent me that news story, uh, you know, weeks ago. <laughs> mm. Yes, weeks ago. Weeks before the story came out. Weeks before the story existed, Michael was on, yeah. was on that with, uh, with his photography prowess. And uh, we've, mm. got, we've got a great news story to get into. But first, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about a topic here. And I'm very excited to get into this week's topic. It's uh, it's a topic that's going to be, you know, another another photo bros uh, extravaganza. Another photo bros extravaganza here. We've got a great mm -hmm. topic. We're talking art, and we're talking about does the work speak for itself? So so what do I mean by that? I'm talking about, uh, we're talking some pretty heady stuff here, Michael. We're talking works of art, you know? We're talking photography, painting, film we'll get into a little bit. We're going to try to stick it to photography mostly, but we're going to be talking about a few music I'm sure will come up. You know that me and uh, mm -hmm. Michael Costa, uh, you know, that we love our music. Check out Michael Costa music yeah. on YouTube. Shame. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Hey, um. hey, and just so you know, in related channels, I first, <laughs> in related channels on that channel, I oh. have your channel. So just, just you know, <laughs> if someone, <laughs> if someone comes through on a BTS reaction video, mm -hmm. they might find their way over here the, to the, the Photography Brothers podcast. This is the brotherhood, man. You can't escape. Yeah. You can't escape the Photography Brothers out here. So you can't. No. 
so yeah, I think this is going to be uh, a really interesting topic to get into here whenever we can get a little bit serious and actually talk about the topic. Um, <laughs> I think uh, from my point of view, you know, uh, as an artist and as somebody who appreciates art, this is something that I think about a lot, right? Uh, especially mm -hmm. if it's an artist that you really love, you want to get into the backstory of the artist and things like that. Uh, sometimes that can enhance your enjoyment of the art. Uh, and sometimes it can kind of, <laughs> depending on the artist, it can kind of uh, decrease your enjoyment of the art. So that's definitely uh, yeah. an angle that we'll be able to discuss a little bit here. Uh, don't want to give too much away, too many spoilers, but uh, what, what's your take on this stuff, Michael? Why, why do you think this is uh, an interesting topic and uh, worth, worth covering on the Photography Brothers? Does the, does the artwork speak for itself? Ooh. Um, I want to say it depends, but I do think that knowing, um, and this is just one angle, but I do think that knowing a little bit about the artist sometimes if not most times can enhance the storytelling mm -hmm. um, element of either that track or that image or that video or that film. Yeah, that's that's an interesting take, man. We're not going to uh, give too much away. We'll kind of start with uh, the broad strokes here a little bit. Probably the biggest uh, benchmark to talk about here. Um, people would probably think we're pretty ignorant if we don't bring it up. This is kind of the place to start if you want to talk about uh, the nature of the artist and uh, their relation to the work, you know, does the work speak for itself? Uh, there is an essay by a French writer named Roland Barthes, which is a very famous Ooh. essay that he wrote um, in terms of uh, a famous piece of art criticism here, which is uh, the death of the artist. Uh, so this will give us a, uh, a strong position here that we can kind of argue on either side of. Uh, but Roland here, you know, uh, I think he's a little bit off base, but his point of view is that, you know, you can't look at the artist to explain the work of art, right? He kind of thinks that that's uh, the wrong way of going about it, that if you are purely uh, just looking at the artist and saying like, okay, what uh, does the artist, like the artist's life, the artist's opinions, other mm -hmm. things that they wrote, like how does that help you explain the work? And uh, mm -hmm. I guess what uh, our man Roland would uh, would be saying is that you gotta like take the work uh, kind of out of that context and look at it uh, by itself. So what do you think mm -hmm. about that point of view, man? Maybe that's a good way now we can kind of start uh, getting beneath the surface now that we've kind of set out an example of, uh, of someone who's taken a strong point of view here. I mean, I think he's kind of wrong, but, uh, but what do you think about that argument? Is the, is the artist truly dead and is the art all that matters? Um, maybe, maybe it's based on like, maybe it's, it, it, it's determined by the intent of the artist. So for example, if Peter McKinnon is shooting a documentary about a third world country, Mm -hmm. For example, some sort of struggle that's happening there. I do think that he wants to be as I think his personal brand wants to be as far removed from the messaging of that as possible in order to amplify the messaging of that mm -hmm. as best as you can. Right. So I think like in the context of just trying to highlight something. Um, when you do have like a personal brand and a following, it's great. You know, you can get it in front of them, but you don't want it to be about you. Right. That's true. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, I think sometimes though, um, you know, certainly you mentioned music, um, you know, is a great example of how, you know, um, knowing a bit more about the artist can really amplify the messaging. Um, you know, one example of that could be, you know, uh, you know, in the, on the music side, Mac Miller, um, you know, knowing, understanding, you know, some of the struggles that he had, um, with substance abuse and, um, you know, he had obviously struggled with alcohol and drugs and uh, obviously his passing as well. And knowing those things, you know, 
it's not that his final two albums don't stand on their own. They, they, they do. They're great pieces of work. But understanding that struggle really amplifies the messaging. Um, and sometimes, you know, especially in music, sometimes with visual art, things can be abstract. And understanding the messaging, the heartache or the love or whatever is fueling the, the, the creation process of that piece of art um, can help you understand what they're trying to say in those instances, right? Yeah, man. Uh, while we're on the music topic, I think that that is something that really, uh, really drives this whole discussion home a little bit, right? Like really helps people relate to it a little bit more. You know, not everybody knows all their famous photographers. We'll talk about a few here and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> even some mm -hmm. that we've um, talked about before uh, on the podcast here. But mm -hmm. yeah, man, like for me personally, ever since I started enjoying music and getting into music, a big part of that was like learning the backstories of these bands, right? Like I was really into metal and stuff. I know I don't look like it anymore, but I used to have the, the long hair, the Iron Maiden shirts, uh, the whole deal. Um, maybe I'll send a photo to Sydney and she'll put it up here for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> traded it in for a, uh, for a flannel, button up traded, flannel. Traded it in for, this is actually one of my, this is probably my favorite shirt, you know, you know, it's going to be a good shirt, good. man. Yeah. Thanks bro. I think I wore it during episode one of photography brothers actually. Oh so. man. I sh yeah, we should have synced up. This is a we his synced up. historic, historic shirt here. I'll sell this. I'm going to put this one up as a NFT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to wear it, but you guys can own it on the, the blockchain. <laughs> Digitally, right. <laughs> Digitally. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, but uh, for me, it was like learning about the backgrounds of those bands, like learning about everything. It's funny that you brought up like, you know, an artist dying. And that's another example, right, of some mm -hmm. some thing that you'll like learn about an artist that gets you really into it, like learning about uh, with like my being a big fanboy of Metallica and stuff like that learning about their touring and all of uh, the shenanigans that went on there, them getting known as uh, Alcoholica for the amount that they're like drinking oh, and partying. And yeah. then, the, you know, their original bass player, like the most talented person in the band, Cliff Burton, like passing away and, you know, all of that extra meaning that that puts into the music, right? And like the, yeah. the emotional depth uh, that it adds. So for me, like, especially when it comes to music, but also when it comes to other forms of art, I would say that like definitely uh, when I watch something, when I uh, take in some type of art, when I think about art, I don't think that I can stop myself from thinking about the artist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think like as creatives, like we, we look at work all the time, right? Like we, we hear a song, we, 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 we see a piece of photography or film or whatever, and we see it and, and that's great. But we, I think as creatives, we like to know more. Like sometimes we want to get that next step and understand, you know, what was behind that creative process, what was fueling it. And so I think that's why I like, and I'm not saying that this isn't relative or sorry, uh, relatable to someone who isn't, you know, a creative per se. Um, but, you know, I, I think there is something to be said about, you know, wanting to know more about the creator of said art. Yeah. Um, like you yeah. said, right. Like it, it can really amplify um, the messaging. I, I, I think there's another element to this as well, right? Like mm -hmm. there's, um, in positive and negative ways, it can tell you a lot about, uh, about somebody, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, it, on, the well, we'll, on the, we'll get into the negativity eventually. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. So I'll just, I'll just stay on, on the positives. Uh, we'll, stay, we'll stay positive for now. <laughs> this is right. This is right. Um, you know, on, on a very simple, um, a simple example would be Peter McKinnon. Uh, I have my good friend, uh, pause the world over on Instagram as well. Go check him out. Um, you know, these guys, there are elements to their work that tell you a lot about them and the things they enjoy, you know, on Peter McKinnon's side, you know, often a lot of leather work, a lot of, um, you know, uh, of course some travel, you know, there's a lot of coffee. <laughs> Everyone knows he's mm -hmm. a coffee lover, an obsession. Um, but, uh, you know, that tells you a lot about him. Pause the world, my buddy there. You know, he loves graphic design. Recently got a solid job uh, doing graphics design. So that's that's dope Sick. for him. Happy for him. And he, yeah, man. And, and he loves to integrate a lot of that into his images. He'll have, you know, he'll take his portrait and then he'll go into Photoshop and spend hours baking in like, you know, a, a galaxy in the background or something like that. And that tells you a little bit about some of his interests, right? 
Right, and learning, uh, being able to have that access to the creator, is, like, is uh, is huge for for our enjoyment of art now. Like, we're so lucky, man. Think about, you know, imagine back in the day. Well, maybe it would have ruined it, but like, if Van Gogh had a YouTube channel that was like, "Yo, I'm painting," <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> painting Starry Night today. Like, like and subscribe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, maybe it would have ruined it, but <laughs> <laughs> we have such we have such access to to creators these days. And yeah. yeah, it's so cool for me to like get behind the scenes and learn how things are done. And I'll get into some more mm -hmm. examples uh, from film and, and things like that. Some other things that I enjoy. I do, uh, since this is the Photography Brothers, I do want to talk a little bit about um, photography and how kind of learning more about, and since we're being positive as well, we're being positive, we're talking about photography, you know, that's what we do here on the Brothers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, just just through doing this podcast, right? It's really enhanced uh, my understanding of a lot of famous photography, but also my enjoyment of it, right? And being able to really understand like the context of, uh, of how a work came about. And the perfect example is, uh, I think it was episode five of, uh, of the Photography Brothers when we talked about uh, Margaret Burke White, uh, indestructible mm -hmm. Maggie, right? Like her, her photos are very famous. I had seen a lot of them. Uh, some of them I knew were hers, other ones I didn't, right? You just kind of see these photos around, uh, and they're, they're quite iconic photos. Mm -hmm. Uh, but to me, like learning the behind the scenes of it and like learning, uh, the complications, um, that she faced in order to get those photos. Like when we talked about, uh, being inside of the, um, the factories and uh, all of the different crazy techniques that she needed to use, right? Like uh, yep. specific types of flints and just uh, adjusting to the technology that they had at the time, right? To me, that really yeah. that really enhances things uh, when you're looking, especially when you're looking back at historical photographers, right? Yeah, no, hundred hundred percent, man. Um, you know, on that topic of learning. Uh, and how things can kind of connect. I know you mentioned how, you know, being, uh, you know, you don't, we don't necessarily know how it would have impacted, uh, you know, the creatives of the uh, 1800s, 1700s, uh, having a content, uh, you know, multiple content platforms. But uh, it's definitely interesting now, you know, there can be a link, you know. So, for example, my favorite, or one of my favorite photographers, his name is Andrew Kearns. Um, you know, I came across some of his work on Instagram, great travel lifestyle work and being able to obviously with utilizing Instagram as a platform, go to his bio, find out that he has a YouTube channel and then to go and learn and be inspired through a different medium, um, was really, really interesting. And, and if you just, you know, you just kind of stick to that one, that one medium, that one platform, maybe you don't get there. Um, but, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting how we almost have like various avenues to where we can one inspire people, uh, through visual art, but also communicate, um, you know, our interests and, and, and learnings and, and all these things. Right. Yeah. And on that point of, uh, just how lucky we are, like in this day and age, right. With like the access to creators there's been incredibly newsworthy like i'm talking like top of the well there's no newspapers anymore <laughs> <laughs> there are newspapers really. oh who come we on. just don't read them come on <laughs> who reads newspapers top we of open the web, them up and look for the flyers right? top of the website top of the tablet you know top of the tablet yep. we'll say uh to coin top a phrase, of the tablet to coin a yep. phrase people will look back on that on the photography brothers episode 14 and say top of the tablet that's when they coin that jared poirier right <laughs> uh, so right. if anybody says that now you better be sending me uh five bucks five mm -hmm. bucks cad right okay that's yeah that's but, uh, well cad that's not much but five bucks <laughs> australian all right all right not sure five, on the currency we'll check after five, five kangaroo dollars <laughs> Currency expert, Michael Costa, he's going to look into it for you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on, on the topic of like the, the, the unprecedented access that we have to unprecedented mm -hmm. access uh, that we have to creators, right? Like when that Bernie photo was all the rage, 
I just hopped yeah. on Instagram and I was like, let me get some information for the podcast. I was able to talk like literally within five minutes, right? Of messaging him yeah. on Instagram, uh, Brandon Smolowski. I hope I'm saying his name right by now. Uh, and he was like chatting with me and telling me all about like the lenses that he used and the day that he had, you know, the bagel he ate that day and stuff like that. I don't know if he ate a bagel. He didn't tell me about that, to be honest, guys. <laughs> we, talk, we talked about the lenses mostly. <laughs> You got the deets. You got the deets. We got the deets, right? But yeah, just to be able to like get that uh, background information. And like, I thought that the the Bernie photo was a pretty cool photo. And it said, you know, it was funny that it was getting memed and stuff, but it was also a good photo. And it was interesting kind of how it represented the times that we're in now, right? With like Bernie's expression, wearing his mittens and stuff like that, right? Kind of uh, really just delineating kind of how we're all feeling right now so i thought that was good but then in, in speaking more with brendan and then getting more into you know some of his photography work not just on instagram but like going and looking at his website and his portfolio and stuff like that and being like you know what this guy is an impressive photographer and and i'm really enjoying his work right now and if it wasn't for uh you know the social media that that we have right now i'm such a grandpa eh? if it wasn't for the social media <laughs> I'm oh, trying, guys. I'm trying medias. out here. If, you know, if it wasn't for the social medias, uh, you know, I, w- I wouldn't be able to enjoy his work in the same way. And, and that's the same with a lot of the people that, that we cover here on the podcast. Okay, let's get into the negative stuff. You know, it's not, it's not all positive <laughs> as, much as, uh, as much as I wish as an artist, you know. I want to believe that every artist is, uh, is good and they do things for the right reasons and they always have the right intentions and they're always you know pushing culture uh in the right direction you know it's it's not true and and sometimes michael sometimes (laughs) learning more about the artist uh it 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 doesn't it doesn't help you uh, it doesn't doesn't. help you enjoy the art right so so let's get let's get negative here man what are some uh some examples you can think of i'm sure there's quite a few (laughs) (laughs) i'll give a couple to start i think one that's a extremely obvious um and you might be thinking it right now as a viewer um is kevin spacey Um, oh yeah you know he no doubt you know if you were uh, a fan of of uh, house of cards or or some of his previous films um you were you know kind of disappointed and conflicted right you know uh, i don't know how to really walk the line and and kind of say say what i want to say here but you know at the time of consuming his content we you're, were very you're, impressed you're by your, his acting you're with your brothers here michael don't worry don't worry all right speak, it's it's a safe circle right among the brothers all right beautiful um you know of course like we were impressed by his work at the time uh and you know it's at the end of the day like we he was a highly acclaimed uh critically acclaimed actor um and you know the thing that's interesting about art I think sometimes is what leads us to really appreciate it is um, is how it references what we believe in, our moral compass, mm-hmm. our, um, y- you know, the things we're interested in, of course. But I think our morals do come first for the most part. There's <laughs> for the most part, that's maybe another conversation. But, you know, when someone like that, um, you know, he does something um that is just so unjust uh it's so wrong um yeah it can have a crippling effect on his on his work um you know something that maybe at one point in time was looked at as um an unbelievable portfolio now you kind of look at it as a shame um yeah you know totally man totally yeah and- We'll come up with some more examples as well. I've got a few uh, going in my head. I mean, there's no sh- shortage of uh, of creepy Hollywood guys that we can bring up here. Obviously, uh, Brian Singer is another one, yeah. right? And as a huge nerd, X-Men fanboy, you know, I'm pretty upset about that one. Kevin Spacey, uh, that one friggin' hurt me because I really liked that movie Baby Driver a lot. Oh. A lot. And he's like the good guy in that movie. <laughs> he like saves yeah. he saves the day. <laughs> I know. I know. That was oh, a great movie. Man, you know, why couldn't he get movie. why couldn't he have gotten killed by Jamie Foxx, you know? Jamie Foxx isn't doing any <laughs> any deadly. Uh spoiler alert, guys, just so you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Spoiler alert for baby driver. <laughs> yeah. Oops. 
it's been a while since I did the film review channel regularly, so you know, my uh, my spo my spoiler reflex isn't where it used to be. But good thing Michael's right. keeping us honest here. Uh, definitely another one as well is uh, like Tarantino's work. Uh, not that mm. Tarantino has really done a lot of uh, like you know me too style stuff he's just in defeat you can't really judge a guy for that right just for being in defeat like you know we're not going to hate on tarantino for that but every t I, I, as a film fan film buff you know uh someone who appreciates a a well-made movie shot the right way you know when i see that weinstein logo come up <laughs> mm. right at the beginning of every one of those uh films that quentin tarantino has made it's like yeah, it just, it, I'm not going to say it ruins the movie, right? Like, it's not like I can never watch another Tarantino movie. Yeah. I'm going to put on Inglorious Bastards. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to put on Django Unchained. I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, but at the same time, it, it does sting. And I guess this is just like, we're kind of speaking around it right now. But, you know, as much as I was hoping this would be more of a debate, you know, that might be a little bit more interesting than us just agreeing the entire time. Uh, <laughs> but I think we're we're kind of getting to the point here. We'll talk about more examples. But you know what? Can you separate the art from the artist? No. You can't. No. Right? You can't. There's, yeah. and it's it's going to cause you. I think it's it'll cause you to misinterpret the art first of all, right? Like you might start reading into some things. Quentin Tarantino might be a brilliant example, right? If you just saw one of his movies and you're like, oh, he's saying the N word a bunch. He's racist. He wrote the N word in the script too many times. I don't like his movies, right? If you didn't know the context of that, the fact that he's like uh, a major film buff and like in doing so, he's kind of referencing American history and referencing like the history of film and black exploitation coming out of like, you know, that uh, that tradition of film uh, where you do just like say those words, you put a lot of swears into the movie and stuff like that. So, you know, you've got to you've got to do, I think, as someone who is an enjoyer of art and someone who's an enjoyer of media like you've you've got to do your work in terms of learning about the artist and uh and this guy roland barths i mean he's been, probably been dead for like a couple hundred years or whatever but <laughs> he was wrong man the, the artist is the artist is not dead like the artist is truly alive and uh and trying to evaluate a work uh without taking the artist into account i think uh is is going to be mi not only misleading but potentially dangerous yeah you know just to add a point here you know like if if you, it is okay to like house of cards it is okay <laughs> <laughs> like it's okay to still love baby driver and to yeah. love tarantino films and to love you know m films that have you know production companies come up before it starts that you don't necessarily agree with <laughs> you can listen um, to michael jackson but, music too if you want i guess yeah. And the way that I, I like to justify it is, you know, especially with group work like that, it is so much more than one person that goes mm -hmm. into making that an incredible piece of art. It's, of course, the on-screen ensemble, but it's it, there's so much going on behind the camera. And I think it's... I think it is not only okay, but, like, almost wrong to look at it f through the scope of like he's in it or she's in it um i'm not i'm no longer okay with it because they did something last last year you know if it's maybe if it's something that's a bit more independent maybe if it's like a, a singer's album maybe if it's something like that you know they mm -hmm. do something incredibly unjust then maybe it's easier to to ignore that piece of content but it's unfair to the other people you know, the, a lot, a lot of those cast members, those people that stayed long hours behind the camera, that that put a lot of work into that. You know what? Even if you remove spacing, you put someone else in, it's still a great right, show right. because there's a lot of effort put in. Yeah, that's a really good point, man. Like that's that's definitely something that you need to weigh, right? Like if you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I Brian Singer did this uh, stuff, and now I'm, all of the X Men movies, like I'm not gonna watch them anymore. That's you know, you're not just saying. F you to Brian Singer. You're saying <laughs> F you to our man Hugh Jackman, future guest yeah. of the podcast. You're saying yeah. F you to Halle Berry in her prime. Come on, guys. Like, Jesus. You're you're saying uh you're saying F you to Professor Xavier, bro. Oh to, my god, you what's can't that, what's that dude's name? I feel really bad for not knowing Ian 
No. Nope. Or er, no, he's not Ian. That's nope. the other guy. That's Star, Danito. Star Trek. Star Trek guy. I, I'm not. Gonna... Uh, uh, ma, 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 uh... God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's a photography show, okay? Just because we both love film and Captain, should know these, Captain should Picard, know this. Captain Picard. This is correct. Him. Uh, looking it up. Looking it up. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. go real, real dumb when I uh, when I bring it up here. Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Fuck. This is great podcasting. <laughs> anyway, you're saying f you to Patrick Stewart, and do you really want to say f you to Patrick Stewart? Like, come on, guys. It's Patrick Stewart. I don't. So no. important. So important. So beloved. I couldn't even remember his his name man but anyways um yeah so that's that's true man you shouldn't you shouldn't discount uh the entire work just because of especially with something like uh like film right there's so many different people involved with it and to say Mm -hmm. like oh this entire movie is trash and like it shouldn't mean anything to you or you know this entire album or this entire genre of music (laughs) right yeah is like yeah the value that it has to you is all of a sudden stripped away uh, because of like the work of one person. And e- even with music, right? Like look at Michael Jackson's music. It's not just that one person who is responsible for that, right? It's all like he wouldn't have done any of that by himself. It's about all of the people who are behind him, the producers, the other musicians and everything else that go into it, right? So yeah, that's a really good point, mm-hmm. man. And I think there's also times, right? Like we're kind of talking here agreeing boringly <laughs> that uh, i'm having a great time man no, are I'm you do you need too. to take a nap say, or something i'm just saying you know we need we need more conflict on this show we need to start some controversies <laughs> the sony and nikon tension just isn't enough anymore Mike. oh you know what we need to have like a sony canon debate yeah. maybe that's yeah. the way to go yeah. Yeah. So, yeah we'll do ah maybe that's a future podcast episode you know maybe we got, we, got a, we got a lot of episodes to do so maybe that would be a good one we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk I'll t- my people will call your people um, okay and we'll work something out <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure who, i guess it's sydney i guess you'll have to talk to sydney about it okay Anyways. and you can talk you know sydney uh, yeah so sydney would call my people yeah who's your people my um I think the only one available will probably be my cat. All um, right, all right. Sydney actually. So Cusco. She, she's yeah. been saying that she's been uh, trying to get more experience um, negotiating with cats. So that's mm. actually that's well, actually a great perfect. opportunity. Uh, yeah, hey, yeah, man. Uh, just <laughs> one more thing I want to get into uh, before yes. we get on our very serious um, photography podcast. Before we get into the news here, uh, one more thing that I want to bring up. You know, we're kind of agreeing here that. You can't separate uh, the art from the artist. Um, it's it's going to ruin your enjoyment of the art if you try to just view it by itself. Uh, it's going to lead you to maybe misinterpret it. Uh, you know, at the same time, if you just try to like look at the artist too much, I think that can be a problem as well, right? That's kind of the other side of it, is getting too obsessed with the artist. And then you're kind of trying to evaluate the art but you're only looking at the artist. And I think that a perfect example of this is Mr. Kanye West, right? Ooh. I think this is a, this is like the artist gone rampant, right? Like uh, the focus is so much on, and he has good music, right? Like I, I won't lie. There's some, some tracks of his that I really oh, enjoy. 100%. Uh, he's a great producer. Uh, some of the work that he's done is incredibly like fundamental and uh, incredibly influential in the world of like hip hop, pop music, all of that stuff. Right. Yeah. But the fixation on him and like just the sheer shenanigans of it all is super distracting to me. Right. What do you think? It is. Yeah. Um, you know, actually I think Connie is one of those guys where I am able to separate it. Like I, I don't want to conflict some of the messaging we've been, been giving but like <laughs> hey um, man we're, we're approaching every angle here you know we gotta leave it all yeah the table. yeah yeah and, and but and honestly like maybe it is just due to like connie's more he's more of just a weird guy you know like he's not like a, a terrible human being he just says dumb stuff sometimes and he yeah. like he he's in the news for the wrong reasons you yeah. know often you know another guy like that um you know, unfortunately, uh, I think fairly recently he's done some stuff um, that that wasn't great. I need to look into that, so don't don't 
uh, check me on that is Shia LaBeouf, right? Shia La- Oh, really? Shia, for the most part, um, you know, just was doing weird stuff. Um, I think he's been going you know, a bit crazy, yeah. He's been going a little crazy for sure. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he was arrested. He was making some racial slurs. He but wasn't does, doing some great does, stuff there. Does but. that ruin our enjoyment of Transformers 1 through no 4? Way. <laughs> oh, he, 1 was, through 3, One through my three. dude. <laughs> I'm a Transformers guy. Bro, okay? so you know what... Let me... Okay, hang on here. Hang on here. Hang on. Okay, here. okay. Bro, so you know for certain which of the Michael Bay Transformers movies star Shia LaBeouf, but you don't know Patrick Stewart's name. Yeah, I mean, neither did you, man. So, <laughs> uh, I didn't have a movie review channel. Like, what, what, do, you, what do you want, dude? <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Wise. Moving on. I'll get down off of my high horse then, okay? You know what? But uh, yeah, yeah, Shia LaBeouf. You're making a point about Shia LaBeouf. Uh, no, no, I was just gonna say, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of of the work that he's done. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's a lot of the stuff that he's said and done recently, um, you know, captured on video, and um, it, it's not not great. I don't stand for that. I don't align with it. But I think just maybe a lot of his work, I was just so it's so deep rooted um, within you know film cult the film culture that I love and grew up with and. Um, you know, films like Transformers, of course, you know, launched me into a lot of his work that I just fell in love with and became a big fan of his artistic for, achievements. Um, artistic achievements, yeah. everyone. Yeah, it, it, you know, I definitely do think that there has been a bit more of a transition between, um, you know, being a fan of him and being a bit more of a fan of, you know, some of the film that he's done. Um, since, you know, since some of these things have happened, of course, um, it was easy. I think it is easier to ignore when it's just, you know, him doing weird shit. And I guess that's kind of the transition. Um, when we talk about, um, you know, Kanye, you know, he, I don't Mm. think someone let me know. Everyone's doing shit now. I don't know. I I don't think Kanye's (laughs) done anything criminal. I think he's just done weird shit. Um, you know, maybe the moment he steps over that line is, is when we can, um, start, you know, thinking about him and potentially his work differently but yeah um yeah and i i think i think in the context of that i think in the context of creators highlighting um you know in documentaries highlighting work that you know that is is important and and, in issues and stuff like that and i think in those situations you you have to and, and you can and sometimes have to separate the creator but from the work but i i do think we are for the most part aligned on the fact that uh, sometimes it can enhance or fulfill the enjoyment of that work. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's kind of, um, you know, with with all things in morality, there's no like hard and fast rule yeah. necessarily, right? And I think that that's yeah. uh, an important thing to remember. It's going to be a little bit different to everybody, and I, I think that's important to respect as well, right? Like if if you're one of those people who is just completely like now that all that Weinstein stuff and like Tarantino made those movies with his money, you're like, no, I'm not going to watch any of these movies. You know, if that's your view, I, I, I think you're wrong. Right. But like, if that's your view, I respect that. I don't think that you should be necessarily like trying to stop other people from, uh, from watching it. But then yeah. again, if something does get bad enough, I think it's really important that, uh, yeah. that, that we are, um, at the very least, like, I, I'm never like I'm an artist, man. I'm never gonna say that you should ban art of any kind, right? But I think that there should be like a caveat, and yeah, like if there's these stories out about people, uh, if people are gonna go, go and be looking at their art, I think that they deserve to know about it, right? So, context is king. Context, context is, king. is king, and content is king as well. And content, that's right. <laughs> and, and that's why we're here. Uh, I think that's a pretty good transition. You want to go into the news? Let's do it. I don't know what's going on with this episode, man. I feel like I'm like so much sweatier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> you're in, you're in like that space, right? Like, yeah. You 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 need to you need some ventilation, dude. Is yeah, there a window? 
It's super hot in my house right now. I feel like opening the window would actually make it worse. It's like the big, um, the big windows on the side of my house and like the, the sun just bakes through there, you know, it just gets my house hot. So whatever, I don't mind. Hopefully our viewers don't mind. You can't hear it in my voice that I'm sweating, so. No, no, I think when you, if you know, I don't know, wh wh where's the sweat though? You know what I mean? Like if you got sweat under the armpits, maybe if you move, maybe you're yeah. going to hear like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just, <laughs> bro, I'm not oogie boogie from, <laughs> There's... Oh, the, Jesus. the viewers are loving it. The viewers are loving it. It's all, right, all good. All right. It's all good. All right. Uh, we Trying got a news story trying to look good here on the brothers you know i'm doing my best Always. i got my lights on here i can't get a haircut you know michael's got his new glasses on making my glasses look like crap i put on the <laughs> official photography brothers shirt for you guys and what do i get just just a bunch of criticism all right let's get into the freaking news story here what's going on with the news buddy <laughs> all right sounds good man uh we'll talk after you know we'll make sure you're okay but uh you know, I need the news story. I I want... <laughs> um, yeah, we have a good oh. news story today, though. Um, we do. I think it's going to transition into a, 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 a good conversation. Um, so, of course, the source. Of course, the source. I like it. Uh, let's charge for it. Um, the source is Petapixel. A uh, big fan of the the source here. Mm -hmm. um, written by Michael Zhang, uh, and it is titled "The Anti Gang Program Teaches Kids." to shoot cameras, not guns. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of context as to what's going on here, I will read a little bit uh, from there, just a couple sentences, just to give you uh, some straight up facts. All right, Michael's coming with the facts. The facts. What? I'll count Don't... you in. I'll count you in, okay. ready? All right. One, two, three, facts. Don't shoot guns, shoot cameras, or DSGSC is a program that's working to keep youth away from gang violence by teaching them to shoot cameras and not guns. The social and emotional learning based program was founded in Washington DC by comedian and filmmaker Rodney Grant. You may or may not know who that is, but you know, he uh, used his 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry to create this immersive two week camp that teaches camera work film production and creative writing uh really really cool um nice you know obviously there are uh you know bad parts uh to every area and, and, and it, there are different ways that i think governments think to um you know on a large scale think to try and uh correct that or or to help those yeah. areas um sure. this is a really interesting take that honestly i think really just took a creative to think up yeah um, totally man you know, uh, it mentions here, you know, the students a range between 12 and 17. Um, you know, they teach them skills, obviously the camera, you know, camera skills, but they also try and bake in, you know, um, some of those principles around self-awareness, self-management, uh, you know, responsible decision making, social awareness, um, and relationship skills. Obviously, all things that are very, very important. We've talked to at different capacities throughout our podcasts, um, you know, but these are life skills. These are things that are, you know, crucial to understanding how you feel about things. Um, and, and, you know, how you carry yourself in the, in the way that you, you know, you, you interact with other people and yourself. So really, really cool. Um, really cool news story here. Uh, one of the last things I just wanted to say here, this is, a quote from Grant uh, during an interview with CBS, he said, these kids don't deserve guns in their hands. They don't deserve people not believing in them. They got to have more people believing in them. And I guess the idea is that, you know, obviously you instill a lot of these principles in them, but also you give them a specialized technical skill set that allows them to now go off and have a career. Um, and that can help, right? Yeah, man. No, I really love this story, man. I really love that you uh, 
brought this here to the podcast today. You know, there's a lot of photography news out there. There's a lot of things that we could talk about, but I think this is like the most uh, vital thing. You know, I'd feel pretty stupid coming on here with this news story out there and saying like, oh, there's a new Sony this, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, right, maybe if know? it was like a Canon, then it'd be like a bit more ridiculous. Maybe, you know, but, yeah. maybe, maybe if it was a Canon, we'd cover it. But uh, <laughs> I think that this is truly a lot more vital. Yeah. Um, a few things that this got me thinking of just as I was kind of, uh, kind of thinking of what I wanted to say, uh, mm -hmm. about this, about this news story, kind of the angle that I would take. Uh, I, I obviously love this project. I obviously, uh, love what this guy, uh, I've never watched any of his comedy before or any of his films, but I'm going to go check him out. Uh, he goes by mm -hmm. Red Grant. Uh, that's right. His first name is what? Rodney. Rodney, Rodney Grant. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll definitely be um, checking him out. Uh, I really hate the title of this news article, though. I think Petapixel kind of dropped the, drop the ball. Uh, calling the, the program is certainly anti gun, uh, but I'm not sure it's anti gang. And I think that's kind of like a, uh, to me, that comes off a little bit uh, like not really understanding the situation when you say something like that, because the problem mm -hmm. isn't. The problem in like poor neighborhoods in DC isn't like it is gangs. I, I'm not gonna lie, right? That's it. That's part of it. Uh, but you know, there's a lot more elements to this. Like the reason why people are poor and joining gangs. You know, it has a lot to do with policing, uh, the economy. Uh, you know, like racial injustice in uh, society in general. <laughs> there's a lot to it, right? Yeah. So you know, you could outlaw every gang, and like these problems would still exist, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I do think, uh, other than that, it's very important that this is getting some coverage, and uh, and I do really um, like you were saying, man. Like the fact that it took a creative to think of something like this uh, was really was really a good point that you just made, right? That's something that really hit home to me and something as I was like thinking about this later today, I mean earlier today, if I was thinking about it later, <laughs> later today, today. <laughs> using the official Photo Bros uh, time machine, thinking about right. this earlier today, right? And like literally um, I'm having my coffee there and these cops are like going by me on horses, right? That like in Toronto, we have like cops on horses. And it like, to me, I was just like, what are we doing with this? Like all of this money that we're spending so these cops can ride around on these horses, like, hell yeah, let's get like, that's so, it's so not creative is kind of my thought at the time, right? I was like, is this really helping the community having these cops mm -hmm. ride around on these horses? You take that money, right? And you spend it on something like this. And all of a sudden you have these kids like so young too, 12 to 17, bro. Like that that's, you know, they're in danger of, uh, of getting affiliated with the gang and like, you know, running around with a gun in their hand and yeah. stuff is like very scary. Right. And the, the fact that like, it's, it's taking a creative person and, you know, someone like, like me and Michael, not that we've really achieved anything like this, but, uh, you know, somebody with our type of mindset. And I think for you guys out there, you know, if you guys are creatives and stuff like that, like this really made me realize like, the the power that we have as creatives right that we don't sometimes yeah. don't even think about right just the ability to like put out our point of view and and uh you know our view on the world and kind of you know shape the way that people feel about us right and that yeah. this uh tool is kind of in our hands in a lot of ways because of our priv privilege right like I, I went to uh a good university i mean i i I worked really hard and everything like that. Right. But I had like certain privileges in society and, uh, yeah. and it's allowed me to get to where I am, where I have the time to like make content and stuff like this. Right. And not everybody does and not everybody has these skills. So the fact that uh, red grant is out here creating this program, uh, helping kids out, uh, is pretty amazing, man. It really is, man. Um, yeah. And also just for context on the horse thing, like if people don't know, <laughs> horses are a lot of money. Like yeah. they, they, not only like to attain a horse, it's also like the maintenance of horses. Okay, like I have friends and people I was I was surrounded by growing up that loved it. It is expensive for sure. That that, you know that it doesn't really yeah. do much for you know it just as a local uh, a local example here. It doesn't do much for really the community. Aside and, from maybe a cute photo. And um, for more horse expertise like that, make sure that you check out Michael Costa's new uh, podcast. Uh, uh, Yeehaw, Ride with the Horses. <laughs> 
ye- the Yeehaw Ride with the Horses podcast. Uh, That's every- right. Everywhere you get your podcasts? Mm-hmm. Uh, everywhere, yes. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not, uh, but yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's not a good use of resources. It's uh, it's not a good use of resources. Um, yeah, you know, I had a couple of points here. Um, I think creativity is a great outlet. At the end of the day, this is this is uh, uh, um, an example of that. I think you know there are examples that even on a smaller scale can be applied. When it comes to creativity, um, you know, it's often just an expression, um, an expression of how someone's feeling. It's an expression of uh, someone's views and beliefs. And it's something that we kind of spoke to in, in a small way earlier in the podcast. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, having an outlet is such an incredibly powerful thing. We've talked about, um, you know, how we've gotten into photography in, I think it was a couple episodes ago. We'll link that down below. You know, I talked about how when I, you know, I had a negative interaction happen um, in my life, it, you know, it, it brought me really down for a while. I was not taking photos or video at the time. And I really allowed it to negatively drain me. And I, I you know, drank a lot of alcohol. Um, and uh, there was one day, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it you know, it all here and, and, and kind of ruin it for, for that podcast because I do want you to go back and listen to it. But, you know, there was a day where my eyes kind of opened up and saw that, you know, creativity um, in, in photography, in the form of photography, but also community, that the community that surrounds that um, can be an, an incredible um, outlet in way to share, you know, your passions and stuff like that. And it's something that takes you away um, from, from, you know, whether it's a temporary situation or, or maybe it's a fairly constant situation, it's something that can help you escape and focus on maybe self-reflection or, or just expressing yourself creatively. Totally, man. And, and just the value that it, that it gives you as a human being, right? And, and we're talking about some people here, like some of these kids in Washington who, you know, no one's ever really told them that, like, you have something to say that you have an interesting yeah. perspective that people are that uh, people are intrigued by that people want to know more about your life. They want to know more about your story, right? And yeah. uh, just that that feeling of um, that that feeling of uh, importance in the universe, frankly, right? That like you're not just uh, you know you, that that your fate isn't determined by just the situation of your birth or your surroundings that you're in control of your life that there the options are limitless right you want to be a filmmaker you want to be a professional photographer you know you want to have a photography podcast you can do it like those skills are there for you right um you just have to learn them and uh and you'll be able to to create the things that you want to create and uh and animate yourself man And, and that's been the big thing for me like ever since i got into this stuff like way before I was into videography and uh, in photography, I was into graphic design, right? And that was a big mm-hmm. outlet for me, but especially getting into like creating content and especially, you know, having this podcast and creating like long firm content, be, being able to uh, every single week, like dig into some type of news story and some type of topic and be able to really come to terms with like the way that I'm feeling about things and express yeah. that to other people and like, have a whole community of artists uh you know speaking back to me and and discussing this stuff like it's just been so huge to me and so huge to my development and like i'm so excited about this stuff man like this is my whole life now you know and like sometimes i can't sleep at night i'm so excited about it because i have a shoot the next day you know which is probably not good i should probably sleep but (laughs) (laughs) sleeping sleeping is good man (laughs) also good um don't get too obsessed guys don't be like your brother jared that's right um yeah, man, honestly, just to like to comment on what you said around the podcast, like for anyone watching this or listening in, you know, we there is research that is done. There is, you know, fact there are facts that are presented. But a lot of this and honestly, is in it, this is something I really admire about the show and why, you know, I really want to want to continue doing this with Jared is the fact that like a lot of it's free flowing. And it's uh, it's a lot of winging sometimes, you know, you hear Jared say something and it sparks an idea. And, and a lot of, 
you know what I'm saying after these facts have been presented after all this you know stuff has been talked about is just like me coming to terms and self-reflecting and and uh, like Jared said like understanding how I feel about things yeah um, it, it so it doesn't have to be a photo it doesn't have to be a video it doesn't have to be you know a a, a, a platform or or, or or creative medium that you necessarily associate associate yourself with you know there's you know maybe it's time to start taking up a different form of art um, to, to help you, you know, express yourself. I know a lot of people who during this time, uh, crazy, crazy time, man, I, I can't <laughs> wait to watch this podcast like 20 years from now. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> but we both have man, nice haircuts or maybe we won't have any hair by that. Point I don't think, long. yeah, man, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to be done. I'm going to be done. Uh, gonna be out of the hair game, eh? <laughs> I'm going to be out of the hair game, man. But, you know, I, there are a lot of people that I know because they're creatives and I've met them prior to COVID. And COVID hit, man, and it was hard for them. People lost jobs. Yeah. Um, I know people <clears throat> yeah. who, who transitioned into starting to paint and they are incredible at it. People who were strictly photographers but started YouTube. Different mediums, man. Mm-hmm, you don't, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do more of, the same thing uh, that doesn't necessarily always drive results. Some people might transition and start doing more music as well, because maybe they find that there are some things that they need the platform of music and songwriting and words and lyrics to, to express and get off their chest. Right. Yeah. And in terms of uh, helping like underprivileged people or, you know, people in kind of poor neighborhoods, uh, you know, whatever you want to call them, more more disadvantaged, less resources, all of these type of things, right? Uh, music is a huge one, and um, I'm glad that now, like photography and videography, is something that people are getting more interested in, and the more the merrier, right? Like you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of creatives, there's there's a lot of videographers, there's a lot of photographers, but uh, I'm I'm not sad about it, you know. I'm I'm happy to have everybody contributing and uh it's just just more people to to share the love of photography and the love of creativity with and uh yeah yeah, man definitely more that these kids can contribute to uh to society than like getting involved with like drug dealing and uh and ending up in prison or whatever right so the the fact that there are some artists like uh like our man here, Red Grant, who's been able to, you know, through through creativity, uh, through comedy, through filmmaking, uh, been able to develop himself and uh, and achieve success for himself. So cool that he's uh, going back and and giving back, man, and and very inspiring to me. Like if if there's some stuff like this that I could do, I might even like reach out to my old high school or something like that and be like this. Like this honestly made me realize a lot. Like the like the power that that I personally have because I know how a camera yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like it, it is a powerful thing in terms of like being able to influence others, but even just being able to like uh, to build up yourself, right? To like build up your own confidence and and develop yourself. It's it's huge. So we'll we'll be uh, we'll be inspired by this story for a while, and we will be uh, trying our best to emulate it. I think. Right, Michael. 100% my dude for sure for sure uh some more stuff here just to give you guys a little bit more details um the program here uh don't shoot gun shoot cameras uh it has completed it was a two-week program uh over zoom with some uh in-person stuff i guess because they did produce a short film out of this called the store uh and now that it's been a success uh, Red Grant is looking for a little bit more funding. Uh, I think they're trying to secure 50k, and then they're going to be reproducing this now that it's worked in DC, uh, in some other places, New York City, uh, Los Angeles, Atlanta, stuff like that. So very exciting. And I did look up as well. Um, definitely support these guys if you can. But here in Toronto, if you're a Toronto native like myself, like Michael, I don't know, he's all he's all over the place. He's Mr. Worldwide. Yeah. You guys know Michael. Um, mm. But but I'm a Toronto boy through and through. So I just want to shout out 
a uh, couple of uh, my friends that I met back in my Vistaprint days uh, at Film Stars Project. You can find them on Instagram. I'll put the link down here, but I'm pretty sure it's FS underscore project on Instagram. Uh, and they're doing a similar thing, man, like finding, you know, disadvantaged youth in, uh, in these communities and helping to teach them like script writing um, and producing uh, and filming and audio engineering and everything that goes into making wow. like movies and, and short films. So definitely check them out. And, uh, you know, if you got a, a few bucks, uh, tax season is coming up. I know the money number might be a little <laughs> bit tight right now, but you know, if you have a few bucks, maybe, maybe toss it their way. So that's the film stars project. That's incredible, man. Yeah. No, thank you for, uh, for highlighting that local, like a local resource there too. Like no that's, problem. You know, I think as we try and uh, look for news stories and stuff, I think when we we find these, we'll try and um, continue to to mention them, highlight them as resources, things to share the word around um, because they're important. And I think that they do, you know, speak, uh, speak a lot of uh, it, it speaks a lot to, you know, what we we've been talking about uh, in regards to having an outlet and just being able to kind of just focus in on something more positive. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to keep it positive here on the photography brothers and, Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to keep you, uh, obviously up to date with all of the most important news that you need to know. Uh, Mm -hmm. but in order to do that, you know, me and Michael, the, the process here, we, we do the research, right? We do our studying, we do our reflection. And then we come back to the podcast next week and we bring you some new stuff. So the second I turn on, turn off this camera, I'm going right back over here, filling my head with more knowledge. And, uh, you know, I take a couple pee breaks a week, but other than that, it's just, uh, it's just pure. (laughs) Well, don't forget the hot pocket breaks, hot pocket breaks. And, (laughs) uh, you know, I keep it healthy. I do my push ups. I drink 12 beers a day. And mm. uh, ice cream sandwiches for breakfast. Don't forget the the photographer's yep. uh, the photographer's breakfast of choice. You're gonna want to get um, deep fried Mars bar and put that in between two ice cream sandwiches. So just remember that. Uh, if you don't know what aperture means right now, you need to go to the grocery store. You're gonna get those ice cream sandwiches. You're gonna get that deep fryer. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna bring it home. You're gonna get that Mars bar. Make sure you get one of the older ones. It works better if you go to the back, the reach back there into the old at the convenience store. They're going to ask you what you're doing. They're going to be suspicious, you know. Just uh, tell them get, you're trying to learn aperture. You might get kicked out of a couple of stores. I'll be honest. You might get kicked out of a couple, just like two or three. You know, you might be walking around. It's nice outside, anyways. <laughs> Jared is banned from 32 superstores uh, across yep. Canada. Actually, yep. you yeah. try to try to actually this has been the best thing for me ever since we had this lockdown i can go to loblaws again because they let me wear the mask they don't know ah (laughs) you you ninja up eh yeah man but they they know soon enough when i'm getting back to my old mars bar tricks Mm. but uh you know for a while i had them fooled so (laughs) anyways anyways uh but uh yeah i think uh i think that was a great show I really, yep. uh, I really had a great time. It was super fun. I think that we should probably not do these after a full day of work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. It was a great one. One of the greatest episodes. And uh, I'm sure Michael Costa has uh, a good sign off for you guys. Are we highlighting a uh, <laughs> highlighting a creator? On the spot? Yeah. We highlighting a creator. Yeah. All right. Um, Michael Costa's you know got what? a creator. Obviously, I mentioned uh, this individual earlier on. Um, find him on Instagram at uh, Pause the World. Mm. Uh, incredible portrait photographer. Uh, like a dog um, pause or like uh, pause on your remote? Yeah, like like hold up. You know what I mean? Yeah. All like right. pause. I'm trying to create a pause sign on screen. I also have one percent battery life, so I will transition <laughs> this out. Check out Pause the World on Instagram. Check out some of our previous episodes on the Photography Brothers. Check out the resources and links down below in the description. 
Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button, tell your friends about us, tell them we're incredible, hit that like button, tell them to hit the like button. Okay, go listen to K-pop music. This has been the Photography Brothers Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And, and, Jared, we will see them in the... Uh, future? Future. <laughs> I was going to say next one, but future works. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.